With me this year, the Lord told me I could come to 10 different places. You know, I think he put boundaries on all of us in a new way. And uh, so I have had to let him direct me because, you know, I get lots of requests to go places and do things, and I have never been one just to do that. So I have to really hear him say, this is one of the places that I want to draw my people together. And uh, I have been into Alabama this year. I've been to uh, Las Vegas this year. And uh, I have been to Houston this year that I knew the Lord sent me for various reasons. And then Philadelphia and Trenton. Let's thank God for these two places. And I believe there's reasons we're here. I, I mean, uh, he predetermines our time and place so that we can grasp for him and find him and pull him down into our midst. And uh, for him to unfurl that banner through here and say this will be known as the meeting of beginning again. Now, uh, we are in a very historical place here. This place was dedicated to World War I. But the thing about Trenton is, Trenton was where George Washington won his first battle. And I believe that's very significant. Now, I want you to sort of track, because <laughs> I've, uh, I've, I've spoken in some places uh, recently and done a lot of things, but uh, on the on the web, but I, I haven't felt the prophetic anointing the way I'm feeling it right now. So that says that he brought us here to the first place that this nation really ever had a victory for a reason. And that is very, very key for us uh, that uh, we are now entering a time where God had together people, and you have to think about it. He didn't lift all the restrictions for us to gather here until last week. So for John and Cheryl and the team to step out in faith and secure this place for us to gather, God wanted us here tonight. So... And, of course, I've seen Carolinas, I've seen Maryland, I've seen Pennsylvania. Richard Brink, I, I saw you first in uh, Maine, and you hosted Dutch and I, and there's something the Lord brought you back here for tonight, because one of the ways I saw that unfurl, it was over you. And the Lord said, this is the, a time of beginning again. And so you're going to have to go back and look. Now, when the Lord says that, Remember, time is a circle, so you're going to have to look at where you were two years ago. You're going to have to look at the warfare you were in two years ago, and now that he brought you here. Then we're going to have to go further and look back to how this place was built in 1930 in the midst and dedicated in the midst of the Depression. So he's beginning to bring us back there again. And, uh, and we want to understand that for God to say it, he already knows how we're going to get into our next future. So I, I want you to be thinking like that because that was something very vivid and very historical about tonight. And uh, so we want to go back and again move forward. And I believe he brought us here to initiate that tonight. Now, with that, let me show you a few things. And then I want us to go back and worship because there's such an anointing here. And uh, I'm like, uh, Cheryl, it, in the midst of you hearing and experiencing what God's doing, be sure to give so we can help them accomplish their purpose and uh, move forward here. Now, we have to remember we are living in a new era. Everybody say new era. That means 
we're back in history again for the future. Now, that's what New Era really talks about. It talks about, I am bringing you into a time sequence so that a histor historical things will happen and it will cause you to advance. And so, really, we're in a historical 10 years here that is redefining the world. And this era, remember, including this year, is about the voice that's within you. So I see what the Lord did was he brought us aside for the last two years to reform our voice. And therefore, our voice being reformed will loose reformation. And I have noticed how difficult it has been for some not to want to start new again. It's very difficult for us. And matter of fact, remember in Psalms 46, the word of God says, be still and know. Well, that's the hardest level of warfare you can do. Actually, that is a warfare passage about being still so you will know the enemy's ambush and you will ambush him before he ambushes you. And we're sort of in that time right now. So what we've been doing starting in uh, September of 2019 is contending for who's going to rule. And really, that's what our nation is in right now. Who's going to rule? Who's going to rule? Uh, uh, how are, how's the world going to be ruled? How are we going to be ruled? What kingdom will we really be a part of? Now, you need to say out loud, I know what kingdom I'm of. <laughs> but in the midst of that, nations are in the valley of decision. And that is throwing us into a conflict worldwide. Uh, I was asked, are we in World War, is World War III coming? World War III is surrounding the globe. You don't need to get bogged over one incident that somebody's going to drop a nuclear bomb on us because it's not going to matter if it, to you if they do. If they drop it on you, you gonna, might as well not worry about that. <laughs> I remember in the fourth grade telling my fourth grade teacher, Mrs. Higginbottom, when she would make us get under the... We had to do those things, you know, where you had to get under your chair in case we got a nuclear attack. And I said, how... I remember asking her, how is this chair going to save me from that? <laughs> I, I have never been a real goofy kid, you know, where you just believed, if I get under this chair, I'll be safe from that nuclear bomb. No, I, I've never had that. John, uh, I do want to go back to what you said, John. I told Amber and Daniel on the way up here, I said, the one person I knew I was to travel the world with was John Price because I knew he was not afraid to kill somebody that would try to kill me. <laughs> that was our exact conversation. <laughs> I said, and you know, I have to have that in my life. Because it's not always roses out here. And I always knew John, and John, you know, he, he, he wore this badge thing where he would just take us to the front of the line and tell everybody he was security for this famous person. And, you know, it's amazing. They never did ask. They just let us go. <laughs> and because he would always wear this black outfit, and he was big, and he was tough looking and I, I, I love going all over the world because we were in some big bad tough places so now with that what we have to know right now is we are either moving and each one of us personally now you're moving toward a new prosperity are there curses manifesting all around you we're on the move but it's going one way or the other right now and you need to say, I, I, I know which way I'm going in that, too. Uh, because we have to know that prosperity means you're taking a step on your path. 
and this is really what the word means, to find the baskets that have already been placed there along your path so you can pick those baskets up and keep going. Prosperity doesn't mean we all going to have millions of dollars that we've got to throw around. It just means you're getting to the place that God has for you, and if you'll follow him, he's already got your baskets on the path. Ooh, somebody needs to give in to that, I'm telling you. Now, Trenton and Philadelphia and the 13 colonies are very, very key. They are key to the realignment of this nation. Now, this isn't a new message of mine. I remember the first time I ever shared it was in a Baptist church north of Boston in Portland. And believe it or not, they agreed. Now, I think anybody that knows history in America knows that this is key for America's total revitalization. That we're going to have to see these areas change, change, <laughs> Siri's feeling the anointing here. Uh, Amber, do something with this. I mean, she's just going off. And, and she was going off saying, emergency SOS, did you fall? Did you fall? <laughs> now, I'm telling you, something is going on here. The Spirit of God's here. I am, I, am, I am not worried about what the enemy's trying to do because the Lord is too present in this place right now. Now, now, with that, I see that he brought us here for a threefold cord to, and now that he said it, to begin again. And, it, and I saw these, this threefold cord made up of these three things as I was seeking the Lord this afternoon. Remnant, government, and harvest. He said, I brought you to these places for these two meetings to realign the remnant, the government of this nation, and the harvest ahead. Now, you're going to have to do the homework and all of that, but I do know this. The two places we're going uh, today, to, uh, we're here at this place and then Philadelphia tomorrow, they were both capitals of the U.S. And because of that, he is saying government must be realigned. And you know what he's going to do? He's going to get us out of this two-party system thinking craziness that we have in America, and he's going to say, I have got to realign the government because this 10 years is about who rules. And, uh, I mean, I, I'm, God help anybody that is tr trying to rule at the same level that some are because you're going to have to find how your voice rules. And yet for the Lord to say that this gathering is so key in that is amazing. And so uh, the remnant, of course, God doesn't do anything without his remnant. And I look at some of you, you've been in the remnant. I, I look at you guys from Maryland, and you guys have been in the remnant for 40 years that I know of. And uh, not everybody can stay in the remnant. Not everybody can make it from one transition in the kingdom to the next transition. Because, see, the kingdom's within us, and sometimes, the, now, this is going to be prophetic for you to understand, sometimes the body we're a part of refuses to transition to be the new remnant. Now, I don't see that here. And it's really not about age. 
It is about who is transitioning to be in this new remnant. So that becomes really important for us. And so the divine pause we went through is, was a pause, I think, to start redefining us and to really see what the remnant looks like for the future and who's going to be enforcing justice in days ahead. Are we going to just allow the law to enforce justice? And that would be great if the law understood God's law of justice. And so we're coming into a very, very unique time. Now, that brings me to this statement, prophetic apostolic people are who creates the, pro we're who create the prototypes for the future. So if God has chosen this place, 13 colonies, Trenton, Philadelphia, he has chosen you to be creating a prototype for the future. That means what will go first to set the course for what is to come. And so in a lot of areas, we must see this move of God. Now, here's something else, and I think this is, and this wasn't something that I haven't been saying, but we need to see where we are at the war memorial that God brought us to to have this gathering. We're living in a war era. And he said, okay, let me lift all the constraints and gather together the remnant of my original 13 colonies to the war memorial where the first war for this nation was won, and then let's go from there. And you're going to have to see there's going to be a lot of movement going on in this nation over the next several months. A lot of things happening. A lot of movement going on. See, because God chose me in 1980 to start working in China and working in the Soviet bloc countries, a lot of what's happening there is even fulfillment of things that I have been seeing for that many years. Now, think about how long that is. That's 42 years. And with that, we're seeing things really get aligned in new ways right now. So we're about to see great change come. You cannot fear the change ahead. That will get you nowhere. And with that, what the Lord told me last November is by the time we got to spring, which we're in it now, spring would be the time for war. So for the Lord to have us here at the war memorial for the first world war, it's saying something. Take a deep breath. You don't have to. I mean, we're already in world war. You don't have to wonder if it's coming. We're already there. We've been in it for a while now. You're still here, tell somebody. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you don't have to just all of a sudden think, God, we're in war. Or is war coming? It's been here for a while. Now, it started at, at a new moment on March the 20th, 2020. So you've been living in it. You know, tell somebody you're doing great. Jamie's singing his way through it. I'm telling you. That's what you're going to have to do. And if you ever don't, what did he say in Babylon? You're going to settle down. You're going to build houses. And you're going to find my blessings. And you're going to pull them down. And you are not going to worry about getting back to an old place where you've been because you're going to settle in and get to the new place I'm taking you. See, we've got to think like that. Now, so this war is intensifying. And what the Lord showed me in November was who would be passive by spring. Well, look around. You're not passive. You gather. That says there's a new anointing for you. 
It says you'll break through when you didn't think you could break through. It says you're on the right path. And so what the Lord showed me during this remnant pull aside we've had, he showed me this harvest sickle moving through the heavens, not the earth realm. But what it was doing as it moved through the heavens, it was unlocking the war of harvest in the earth realm. And many of you have read Passover prophecies. I'm sure we have some here in uh, other books. But in there, I write about how the har- a war angel of harvest visited me. And I said the three years would be great training for my people. So, I mean, God doesn't do anything without first telling somebody. Now, poke somebody and say, that might be you next time. Because even I had to ask the Lord after I wrote an article in 2004 in Ukraine, when we were in Ukraine, about what would be happening right now and then the order of nations that would begin to come back. And you've got to understand what is going on in the world now is evil versus evil versus evil versus evil. So don't try to... America tries to make somebody right. Quit doing that. That ain't how it worked biblically. God would make use evil to overtake evil. And you need to reread the Bible in this time of war. I mean, think about when God was ready to take out Jezebel, he got Jehu, who was bad, and then he got Haziel, who was evil. God chose them. Jehu told all of Jezebel's uh prophets that he had gone over to Baal, got them all in one place like this, had a big meeting, and then killed them all. Haziel was so evil, but yet Haziel was what was used to take Jezebel out. You have to know we're going to have to get used to seeing how God uses evil. And quit shying away from something just because it looks bad. Now, now with that, so this harvest sickle was going, and the Lord started showing me the harvest. So if the Lord brought us here at this war memorial to realign the remnant, he's realigning the government of how we will advance, and he's realigning the mission of how we will advance into the harvest of our territory. Now, and we're seeing a lot, we're beginning to actually see the fruit of a lot of this going on. And what I want you to know is you have a portion that God has, and you have to know Judah has to go first. Now, Judah isn't just the praise team, but Judah is the aligned leadership team that knows how to use sound to win the war ahead. It's made up of apostles, prophets, uh, singers, musicians, and they know how to bring the sound in that brings the revelation necessary for us to advance. And so with that, things are moving around us. Tell some, even that chair you're sitting on, that's why you're going to have to see a lot of things supernaturally you didn't see. That chair you're sitting on is not stable. That is a physics principle. That has all these model cues moving in that chair, and you trust it to sit in it. Now, we can trust God a lot more than that, but you're going to have to see that he's moving things all around us that are important for us to watch carefully. Now, so your portion is important. Every state of the 13 colonies is important. Your role in leadership is important in these states. 
your role in assisting leadership is important in the states because see we're moving in a way like we've never moved before and we're having to understand we are moving again now in war so we're going to have to surround and encircle our inheritance our sphere again and the Lord told me as we gathered here tonight to tell you you're going to the next level he told me he told me that in my room today when we came here he said I will take those who show up to the next level They're going to start getting beyond where they've been. I'm going to start showing them how to get others to get beyond where they've been. And then I'm going to raise up a third generation out of the seed of this that will win this war ahead. I was sitting there on the front row. I uh, been over and told Amber something, but I have to. I have to go back to where in uh, I was usually one of the youngest one ones in meetings like this. It started in my uh, second year of college after the Lord visited me, and I never looked back. And I <laughs> will be quite honest with you. I do not like. To speak publicly. But I've been doing it so long and having to trust the Lord every time I open my mouth. And because I can remember going back to when I was 16 in high school, speaking publicly, and even going back to the fourth grade where the first time I ever spoke publicly. And then when I was 18, I started speaking for the Lord. And that became a whole new dimension for me. And I was sitting there thinking, oh, Lord, because somebody had sent me a word and said, you know, I see the Lord using you right now. It's a, a time, you know, such a time as this, like Esther. And I wrote him back and I said, if I went before the king right now, he would say, pale and tired. And, and tell me, that he's got to use me to help raise up new blood. Now, I'm telling you, I was sitting on that front row today, and the Lord said, I already have my mobilizers for the future. And there's a great cost to do that. Now, where are we headed in this war? Well, first of all, you have to understand and I'm going to impart this in a moment to us. I'm not just going to try to teach it. We are gaining new strength to battle at our gates. Now, Trenton is a gate to our nation. And God brought us here. And, Jamie, when you come back up, that anointing to battle at this first gate, where the first war in this nation was won is going to rest down on us. And God said tonight, not me, God said this will be known as the meeting of beginnings again. So that says we're going to leave out of here with the capacity to win many wars ahead. And you have to know that hell does not like what we're about. And so this is either a time that you're going to be the plunderer or you're going to get plundered worldwide. That's a, that's a word for the world. And uh, there right now, uh, things going on, and the Lord says, get ready. I have a people above all people. I have a kingdom people that I am removing nationalism in so I can deliver them 
into kingdom victory. Now, now, and this battle we're in, now the Lord spoke this to me very clearly. It was something I could not have uh, seen without him because, you know, a lot of times I've read the Bible so many times and when you've done that, unless Holy Spirit is reading it with you, you're just going to read it out of your mind. And so I, I try to rely upon Holy Spirit to show me something that I have not seen before. And he did recently. He said, I'm taking my people back this year to surround their inheritance. And I'll take them first to the dung gate. And then I'll take them to the dragon gate. And it's right there in Second ne Nehemiah chapter 2. Because when Nehemiah went back, the first two gates that the Lord took him to were those two gates. In other words, you're going to stand in what seemed so stinky in last season. Or what so tried to pile on top of you last season. And I'm going to take you back there, and this time you're going to rebuild it. Now, that's important. That you look, I don't know how to say this. John probably could say it so much better than me. But, or my brother could say it so much better than me. But he's going to take you back to those big piles you've had to stand in. And while you are back there this time, you're going to say, this is how this is going to fertilize my future. <laughs> then he's going to take you to that dragon gate where that dragon and its breath tried to take you out and accuse you and say things about you. And you know what? You're going to blow like this. <laughs> And his fire's going to go out. <laughs> now, God brought us back to Trenton to say, the dragon and the dung that has now piled up in this nation, the Lord says, we came here and I'm beginning again and I'm going to move the piles out and I'm going to shut the dragon down. But I do think this is going to take over and with us the next three to four years to really make this transition completely. But the Lord said tonight, you can mark it on your calendar. He's marked it on his calendar. He had a remnant in America that gathered at the first battle site that was won and then we'll go back to where our nation, really the root that created our nation in Philadelphia. And let me tell you something. God says we are beginning again tonight. Now, with that, I also see that the strength is coming because there's a new prophetic anointing coming on us. I have felt it. I felt it in me. I have felt the pull aside that God did created something very new in me. It, it caused me to pull some things out of me, words particularly that had come deep down in me. And he's healing me, and uh, he's healing you. And with that, he's reinforcing. And you have to understand, God is God. He takes certain people home on your behalf. And he, he, Cheryl, <laughs> uh, he does. Uh, there's people that are always moving up because he said, you've done what you, I sent you down there to do. We have got to see all this a little different right now. I, I, I look at Daniel and Amber and what the Lord did with them to get them back from Israel. 
And when they come up here to minister, they'll share that testimony. But God just sovereignly said, I'm bringing you back because I have other plans. And he will use things right now to get us moving again. And that's important. So I want you to know we want to loose that prophetic anointing. Now, and also I want you to know why there's such a war is because this year we're starting to build out of Revelation. See, going to the 13 colonies and leading this charge has loosed Revelation again through a territory that had had to be rekindled. Uh, one of the reasons I wrote the book, Rekindle the Altar Fire, I really, I was thinking about New England a lot when, Alamo, when I was writing my portions for that book. That book is very important for us because fire must come to this region. And I think you've caused the roots to start breathing again, but now they've got to go on fire. Now, and so, the other battle that we're really in is a battle for restoration. Jamie began to sing Divine Recovery tonight. Always listen to how Judah's taking us in. And what that's doing is, and what's happening right now in the season, and this is how, what the Lord ensured me. Now, I was visited in this. You can read it. I'm not going into that visitation. He would send angels when we would be at the right place at the right time. Now, there are angelic hosts here that will lead us out of here, and we cannot look back. I always tell people, my brother, I memorized the whole Bible, and my brother learned two scriptures, Jesus wept, and remembers Lot's wife. He said, well, I don't think I need any more than that. And Lot's wife kept longing for something she had had before. God said, this is the beginning again. You aren't even going to start keep going back into the history of the 13 colonies. You're going to begin again with something new that has never been activated. Now, New York, God's got his eye on you right now. He's about to do something with you. Now, with that, here's the other thing. We are in a time of divine realignment. So we're having to let the realignment happen. And uh, how God aligns us is differently from how man aligns us. And we've had to see that during this time because you have to go back to David's alignment for the tabernacle of David and think about it. All those people that started following David, well, you have to remember some of them uh, were aligned with Samuel. The prophetic that had gone before in the last season. Some were aligned with Saul, the apostolic government that had gone before. But what happened was God started recreating the atmosphere to realign his kingdom people. So it says all of those in debt and that were distressed and that were discouraged went with David. And that was the new army. Look at somebody and say, this might not be too hard to get into. I thought there was going to be big qualifications. <laughs> and then how he chose his leaders over armies, they had to swim up the sewage. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. <laughs> he didn't change a lot. And so... We are seeing this whole new move occur. And some of us had to prove we were still willing to swim in the sewage. 
And I, I think God likes that. I don't think he likes us to get to a place where, you know, we're the Pope and we've got a ring. And <laughs> Even though we were on one trip and I told John, we're, the money's getting real low. I'll just put this big ring on I have. You get people. To, we were at some Catholic place. We were in Spain somewhere. I said, I, I know I can pull it off. Just have them come in one at a time. <laughs> you know, we've traveled with several key uh, women apostolic leaders, Cheryl being one of them, Trisha's one of them, and they cost more than what we cost. <laughs> now, y'all will, ne I will tell you this one story. I don't usually ever go out on a, on a trip with people. I do what I do. I go back <laughs> to the place. Well, Chad's a party animal. <laughs> Amber and Daniel, you know, they like to go out. And they, and part of that team loved to go out that we would have. And I went to bed one night. And I got up, and I said, Brian, just check us out of the hotel. Because I always paid the bill. I didn't get into all that. Let's take your money and do it. It was too crazy and too much trouble, and we were having to move too quickly. Now, that's a word from God for you. You're going to have to get past some of your money issues if you really go move fast. And you're just going to have to know God's got something else down the road. But we were in Qatar, Qatar, for some of you. And we were just there the one night, and it was dangerous, and we got on the bus the next morning, and Brian came in and handed me the bill. You could hear me scream <laughs> all over the Middle East. <laughs> Some way or another, and I'll, I'll never forget this, they had gone to get a cheese plate and glass of wine and it cost $2,667. It's burned in my trauma. <laughs> and they said, all we got was a cheese plate, except one person from New York got a meal. That says something to you. <clears throat> now, now hear me. I'm saying that for a reason. You can't let that stop you from moving forward. You just have to cut your losses and move on. <laughs> and say, down the road somewhere, we're going to figure out how to get our next $5. <laughs> That's called doing exploits. And that was my next point for you. We're in a season where God is forcing us to learn how to use resources again. And to learn how to be creative again. And the earth is bringing for its harvest. Now, what I want to end with <clears throat> is loosing this anointing from this place. Thanks, Chad, for helping me. To war again. Some of you have been worn out. Some of you have not had the prophetic wind you need. God brought us here and said, listen, I know this place. I know how it was used to start a nation and to win a war for a nation. And that's why I brought you and you're about to get that anointing. <laughs> Jamie, y'all come back up with me. Let's all stand up. Tomorrow we're going to restart the church up here tomorrow night. Lord told me uh, tonight, he said, I want you to restart. And now it's making sense, the banner that he brought in here. The church from this region. And decree that it will restart new and fresh. And so, the first thing we want to do to put on what we're about here is we've got to think differently. Put your hand right here because your heart needs to be touched. It needs to get joy again. 
If you don't, in Daniel Nambers' book, Joy in the War, if you don't get joy, you can't make it. They've lived through two wars in Israel. You can lose joy in the midst of the war we're in. Right here, you have to think differently. Now, not just think differently over the war. There's things in your heart that God wants to bring forth and delight you with. Some of you have such a burden for your territory. I know one of the cities that we're called to is Charleston. There's something that he puts in your heart that he puts in there so deep that if you'll let him draw it up, You'll see the joy of it again. You'll see what you haven't seen manifested. God gave me a revelation of the bride through the 13 columns. Lord, I say, bring it forth. Now, Father, we thank you for what you're doing. You've brought us back here tonight to activate, activate triumph for the future. You, you said after we got here, Lord, you waved a banner over us. Just, just reach up at it. And you said this will be known as the meeting of beginnings uh, it, it had these words on it. The meeting of beginnings again. Now, Father, I loose this anointing over us. Something starting here, new and fresh. The war era we're in, you brought us back to the place where the first victory happened. Lord, I loose victory over us. I lose the next victory over us. Now, Father, we say strategies. Put things together in our brain that have gotten scattered and pull together the strategies for war. War for our families. War for our cities. War for the territories around us. And then right now, invite the angelic host into every one of these colonies to rest and order the steps of God's, God's kingdom leaders in those colonies. And the Lord said, I brought you here tonight to say I am not ready for you to converge on D.C. yet. But I will surround from the beginning and then you will converge. I will cause a convergence of my people to come on Washington, D.C. and to shout that the Spirit of God is going to turn upside down upside down, upside down, what has been tried to be set in an order that is not mine. I say, I will determine the move of that convergence and I will rally my people and you beginning tonight will hear that rally. Father, we ask you right now for the next move of God. The Spirit, Holy Spirit, we say, come, come again to these colonies. Lord, they were established for religious freedom. So, Father, we say you brought us here to begin again religious freedom in this land. Father, we thank you for the faith of your people. Now, Father, I ask you right now, empower their faith. Blow on their faith. Let them move knowing 
that you have a plan and that you already know the next step and the next basket on their road. Let's worship.